are, are working with, mm -hmm. we understand that there is different types of expenses, right? right? And we the first expense is always the money that you need to spend, right. right? So the money that you need to spend, things like your house, right, utilities, things like that. And notice that you will always spend this before the next thing, which is the money that you want to spend, right? Those are things like, I want to go out to eat, I want to go find myself some nice clothes, right? right? And then there's the money that you desire to spend. These are big ticket items. This could be like, I want to do large charitable contributions, I want to go on big vacations, new house, new cars, things like that. Sure. But notice they're always in an order. You're right. not going to jump up here before you take care of this. You've got to take care of the needs, then the wants, and then the desires. Exactly. Absolutely. And what I take a look at is saying, okay, well, what's the income that's going to pay for this? Right. And in retirement, I'm looking at a specific type of income, and that's a guaranteed income, right? So there's this lock on this that says, no matter what, we're going to get it. Okay. So what kind of guaranteed income is there that's out there that we get? Well, Social Security, right? And some people will say, well, Social Security is not going to be there. Look, I'm more concerned about Medicaid. Medicare not being there before Social Security. This is a pretty easy fix. And if you're married, it's times two. Sure. And if you're really lucky, you're one of the 11% of the country that has a pension, right? Mm -hmm. But what we find is that with this particular type of income, there's almost always a gap, right? Sure. So the money that you're getting in, there's not going to cover everything here. There's going to be some sort of gap. And when you're in retirement, you got to get this money from somewhere. So where do we get it from? Well, that's where this comes in. We get it from the cloud? Yes, <laughs> the asset cloud. Think of it like a, like a cloud-based server, right? It's the money that's out there somewhere. Right. You have no clue where it's actually at, but it's somewhere out there. Right. And you can get it, right? It's not underneath your mattress. It's not in your dresser, anything like that. So the different places that we have money out there is like a bank. Mm -hmm. Right? People have 401ks, they'll have an IRA, you know, they'll have mutual funds, they'll have CDs, they'll have stocks, bonds, right? Sure. Cash value life insurance comes in there. And then there's all, you know, multiple things that are out there. Now, these monies that we're saving up, you know, in our, in our asset cloud, they automatically divide themselves into two different sections. And these sections, I think of them as raining into these buckets, right? We're catching it. This one over here is near term, okay? And then you have a much larger bucket over here. And this larger bucket is our long term, right? So this long term bucket is gonna catch some of these. This near term is gonna catch some of these. So our near term, these are things that are right away liquid. I can yank it out in case of a quick emergency. That's things like, oh, my bank, right? Savings account, checking sure. account. It can be some CDs, right? It can be some mutual funds, right? Now, long term, right? This is the money I'm not gonna touch. I'm just gonna keep it out there. I'm gonna let it ride. Okay. So these are things like your 401k, sure. right? IRA, you got stocks, you got bonds. Um, you With know, college funds going to there? College funds, yeah, absolutely, like 529s. Right? You got, and then your cash value life insurance, right? Sure. So a pretty big bucket, right? So in 2008, what happened to the market? Uh, exactly. Crashed. And so many people that were retired, they still need to pull money out, right? It doesn't change the fact that there's a gap here. Right. So where do you think they pulled from? Market's tanking, things are going down. Where do they pull from? Anywhere they can. Right. But most people started looking over here. They're like, oh my gosh. My, right. You know, my investments are going down, I gotta save it from pulling. And they pulled from here. Guess what? Wrong place to pull from. Why? Because all those, all the, the money that you see on your statements, those are all just symbols. They're, it's really not money, right. right? You don't have money in here. What you have is you have shares. And when the market goes down, you need to pull more shares to equal the same amount of money that you needed in here. Correct. So this is not the place to pull when we have a bear market. When we have a bear market, this is the place to pull. Bear market. Right. Because this will have a higher value. Now, now we look 2009, or 2018, we're in like the longest stretch of a bull run that this country's seen. You know, the, the number one thing that us advisors are talking about is, when's the other shoe gonna fall? Right. We don't know. We don't know. Is there's, it's been doing great, and there's no indicators saying that 
it's going to fall. Right. Right. So we've never seen this before. It's doing really great. People need money. Where do we pull from? Well, this in a bull market is where we want to pull from, right? Because this is actually up. You can actually get the same amount of money for less shares. Hmm. Now, what happens many times say, well, I can't pull from there, right? Because I'm going to get penalized. Right. Because the conversations tend to be around 401ks, IRAs, right? These guys over here, and until recently, like 429s, um, but these guys over here, if you take it out before 59 and a half, you get penalized. Right. So these other things aren't in place for many people. Hmm. Now, this is usually where the conversation stops for many with their financial advisors. They don't go any further past this. Now, what we're forgetting though is that there's a whole lot of conversation and that's when you do pull money, how are you getting taxed? Are you gonna get taxed now? Are you gonna get taxed later? Or are you gonna get taxed never? Most people, when we look at where they're holding their money, 75% or more of their assets, right here, right here. They're gonna be taxed later. Exactly, why is that important? Because we find that right now, in the history of the United States, if you take a look from 1940 until now, what the tax environment was, the highest tax bracket back then was like 91, 92%. Those were the Marilyn Monroe's and Rockefellers. Then we saw that it started going down, hmm. right? When yeah. Reagan came in, he capped it at 50. And now we're in our 30s. So if you look inversely at our national debt, we've gone from almost nothing to eclipsing $21 trillion in national debt. Well, look, if we have all this national debt and we're at the lowest rate, tax rate, that's not gonna last for forever. Right. At some point in time, the taxes are gonna start going up, I believe, in order to compensate for that $21 trillion of national debt. Right. So, I would much rather pay the lower taxes now then pay higher taxes later on. And we find most people that start putting away because when this comes out, not only is it later, it comes out as individual income. So it looks like on tax paper, like you're still working and it can bump you into a higher tax bracket. Sure. Right? So what can throw all this into, you know, right into the trash? And that is what happens when one of you dies. Right. Well, this goes from two down to one, which means now we have less income. This gap just got bigger. Mm -hmm. And remember where we pull from? Boom. Here, perfect example, my mother-in-law. When my father-in-law passed, basically overnight, she went from a 15% tax bracket to a 28% tax bracket. Why is that? Do you think she was upset? I, yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. for a couple of reasons. Yeah, well, she's, you know, she's not earning anymore. She's retired, and yet because her husband died, now as a single person, she's still receiving that income. Therefore, she's getting taxed more. Oh, okay. Right? I so, see. that goes away. If one of them had a pension, this could possibly go away. It could go away. Sure. Right? Now, there's another thing. What happens if you have a debilitating illness? It's not, you know, people think about getting, you know, something happening to them. They, don't, they tend to think about, well, if there's an accident. Well, that's not really what causes most disabilities. What causes most disabilities are illness, mm -hmm. right? You have ALS, you have cancer, you got all kinds of things that are out there. Well, when this happens right away, there's a brand new category that takes precedent over everything, and that's health. Yep. And I guarantee you, you're going to pay this for your spouse or for yourself before you start paying this. Now, you've created a funnel that's gonna pull to pay for this health. Because healthcare is not cheap. Nope. And it comes from the same place where you're gonna pull here, and what I've seen firsthand is people start pulling from here. Pull from here, 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 and then all of a sudden, these things are gone. Because this, has nothing to stop it. So my job is to come in and say, we need to stop the bleeding. We need to stop the bleeding so that this funnel is no longer 
taking up all your assets. And how do we do that? The way we do that is by taking a look at insurance. What type of insurances are there? Well, you have health insurance. Why is health insurance? Well, it pays for your doctor bills. It pays, you know, for the surgeries. Those are those are things that you're you're dealing with much more often. What else do we have? Well, we have life insurance. Why is that important? Because life insurance will cover the lost income of a spouse when that person dies. What else do we have? We have disability. Disability is insurance that covers income while you're working should you be disabled. And there's a disability insurance for after you get retired. That's called long-term care. Because it's feasible to say in the last couple years of our life, last two, three years of our life, we're probably gonna need some assistance. Getting around the house, making sure we don't fall, and that's not even if we go into a facility. Sure. In St. Louis, the average price of a long-term care facility is $7,200 a month after tax. After tax. After tax. So you can see how if you're averaging, if you need 86000 a year after tax, you're going to be pulling out over $100,000 every year from here. Right. Long-term care insurance stops that. It replenishes it. And then finally, annuities. Now, I can guarantee you there's going to be people out there that say, well, Omar, we don't do annuities in our houses. Annuities just no good. Forget about it. Well, let me tell you something. Social Security, an annuity. Pensions, an annuity. If you're going to tell me that if you don't like annuities and you start receiving a Social Security check, are you going to say, no, no, you just take that Social Security check on back because we don't do annuities here? Of course not. You're going to take it, right? So annuities are essentially I'm paying into it, paying into it, paying into it. And then at a certain point, flip on the switch. And then it's a consistent source of income for the rest of your life or a fixed period of time, regardless of what the market does. The great thing about all these, once they're put in place due to death or due to illness or retirement, it starts funneling money back here. And this time, you get to choose, do I want it in my short term, my near term bucket, or do I want it in my long term bucket? Mm -hmm. And on top of it, most of these, with the exception of some annuities, they are tax never. Your life insurance, the death benefits, tax never. Your health, you're not getting taxed on that. Disability, when you own your own disability policy, say with long-term care, you don't get taxed on any of that. This is what I look at. And what I find when we're having these conversations is that people start seeing for themselves, well, I don't have mutual funds over here, or I don't have a CD over here, or you know what? I don't have cash value life insurance. I don't have bonds or stocks. Maybe I just have this. And for each of us, we can start taking a look and saying, what's missing and preventing us from being able to live a life that regardless of what happens, we'll be in a position to powerfully deal with it instead of having to worry where our next paycheck is going to come from. So that's what I do. So you're looking at the overall picture to protect people. Absolutely. Not just investments, not just 70% U.S. stocks, 20% non-U.S. stocks, 10% bonds, cash equivalents, but tax efficiency, risk mitigation, and retirement income strategies not just retirement saving strategies. Very comprehensive. Yeah. Omar, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate the insight, and we'll talk to you more. All right.